Hello and you're very welcome to the Shift the Podcast. I'm John Man. Of course, this podcast brought to you by orgretch.com. Use the word Jamak Podcast to get 15% off on the website. We're in to the championship now, so get yourself organized on orgretcho.com. And tonight, I'm joined by former uh, Mead footballer Joe Sheridan and GA Sports Tracker app owner Kevin Kennedy to talk about last weekend's championship action and, of course, this weekend's championship action. So, as usual, really look forward to catching up and chatting with the lads this evening. Uh, I'll start off yourself, uh, Mr. Joe Sheridan. How are you? Well, good, yeah. Um, but we can meet one, uh, which is great. Um, so you can't take any gains for granted when you think of last year against off. You, you know, it was great to get over that. It was, you know, the first round of the championship was always a, a dicey one, um, especially having to get into Longford. Yeah, so it was good. It was good for from me point of view to get get a good win, get a couple of goals banged in as well, and uh, give us a bit of confidence in going into the Lions End next weekend. But yeah, no, Grant. Had a week wedding over down your country down in Crover at the weekend, so um, yeah, nice relaxing weekend and yeah, bit of crack as well. Yeah, the the Crover Hotel or the Crover House Hotel, isn't it? So if, if they want to just uh, give us a bit of sponsor for now, <laughs> we, yeah, we we. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you're looking at. Uh, yeah, we we we'll uh, we'll give them a good old dig out, Joe. God, we, we might get a, a hotel stay for the JMAC podcast night out. Uh, <laughs> any 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 other crack you had a good weekend? All good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, good. all good. Uh, yeah. Caught up on the games from yesterday. Then as good. Well. Uh, game last night as well. So yeah, all good. Happy days, Mister Kennedy. How are you? You're very relaxed looking, and you got the haircut as well. The championship haircut. I think. I don't know, right? Yeah, I hear Did what's you? left of it. It's kind of breaks it into some sort of shape, John Boy. What's left of it? If I don't get the turkey before the end of the year, I'm never going to go. <laughs> I'll try, the flights are not that expensive by all <laughs> accounts. It's it's when you get over there, that's when the that's when the crack starts. How are you? No doubt you had a busy weekend. Yeah, good weekend. Plenty to be dry enough up here. Um, so we got the park and stuff like that. But uh, where to go? I went to, I think it was McDonald's. You want to put that in there? KFC. Um, <laughs> Balmoral Hotel, then go near the Dabnish, but anybody who wants to go to the feel free. <laughs> a de- a de- <laughs> <laughs> the, ga- the, gal- the, ga- the the Galgorum. The Galgorum. Oh, oh, the, the Farnham Estate. The Farnham Estate. <laughs> Farnham Estate is a brilliant hotel. And, it is, um, it is, it is. Get 25% off with where else well, the, geez, the world's a oyster at this stage uh, Crow Park Hotel you know Crow Park the seats um, <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah oh, geez, with, with, with the sky's the limit and you're a good weekend Mr Kenny no doubt a lot of tracking was done you thought you tracked that uh, Cavon victory down in Clones yesterday yeah I don't know it was a good game actually in the track it was interesting to listen to the commentary at half time and what uh, sort of people's opinions on it were um, you know, we'll get into it I did to be sort of images up, but hopefully be able to talk to him today. But it was actually a very interesting game to watch in terms of the stats as well. You know, Cavan definitely performed. There were food value for their money in terms of what the stats were saying as well. Mm, yeah, I was a happy man yesterday. Very much like Joe, I was happy with the victory yesterday. Make no doubt about it. I suppose bit of housekeeping before we crack into the action. That's good. See, are in both good form and fresh as daisies. Um, so the GA.E football team of the week for this week was Christopher Kelly between the sticks, a full back line of Cavan's Pork Faulkner, Waterford's Keeveen Walsh, Sligo's Nathan Mullen, a half back line of Cork's Luke Fahey, uh, Wicklow's Dean Healy and Galway's Johnny Heaney, a midfield of Sligo's Canis Mulligan, uh, Galway's Paul Conroy, and then a half forward line of Cork's Chris Oak Jones, Mayo's Ryan O'Donoghue, Wexford's Mark Rossiter, and then a full forward line of Cavan's Paddy Lynch, Waterford's Tom O'Connell, fair play to Tom, and then a uh, Completing the team of the week this week is me, James Conlon, and then the Footballer of the Week nominees for this week is Cavan's Paddy Lynch, Waterford's Tom O'Connell, and Wicklow's Dean Healy. I uh, suppose, obviously, Mr. Kennedy, that team of the week, all them, and in fairness, I'd like, I like the team of the week this week now, I have to say. There's a bit of thought probably put in, too, for once and for all. Um, and it's good to see a couple of Waterford men in there. And we'll obviously touch on to the Waterford victory now in a couple of minutes anyway. But it, it's it's really good to see, I suppose, the spread of players this week. Yeah, it's probably probably an easier job this week because we had less games on, you know. Um, so fair play to the people who put that together. I'm sure it can be difficult enough for them from week in, week out, trying not to get to, or trying to get as many games as they can. Um, I didn't, did, was Podrick Fogger in there? Was he? Uh, let me see. Faulkner was in the full back line, yeah. Uh, cornerback. Okay. 
Uh, he's put him in halfback, switch him around, and that's the team good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Mr. Sheridan, your thoughts on team of the week? Yeah, as Kevin was saying, like it's good when they, when sort of there's not as many of the high profile teams on. It gives a lot of the smaller county and so that the so called lesser counties uh, a chance to so the, so the show their their ability and get onto the team of the week. And it's good, like it, it's it's a uh, especially the likes of your know, Waterford and. You know, even obviously Wicklow were getting a great win, and it's uh, it's good for them boys because it's it's very hard obviously when so that your top teams is getting all the profile, so it's it does show show some good light onto you know the players in sort of some of the smaller counties. So it's, it's great to see, and it's good spread it good spread of players. Mm, yeah, absolutely, I suppose obviously lads. Uh, the football of the week nominees, as I said, are Paddy Lynch, Tom O'Connell, and Dean Healy. Three lads had absolutely fantastic weekends. Obviously, speaking from my own county, Paddy just was unbelievable down at Clones Chester. Yes, kicked one nine. Um, he was just terrific. No unfairness to him. And then obviously, Water versus Tom O'Connell. Tom had a great game. I love the celebration. I don't know did you see this on the game last night, lads? But it was a hell of a celebration. Tom done. And then obviously, D uh, Wicklow's Dean Healy Dean had a great game at the weekend. I suppose who would you tip your hat to this weekend, Mister Sheridan? Um, look, it's it's. The, the, the big scores were put up and I, I think to score one nine in the championship game against Monaghan against a, a division one team um from from a Cavan point of view and Paddy Lynch like it, it was a great performance and it wasn't as if it was like a couple of handy scores here and there there was some fantastic scores kicked you know and killed off the game the goal it was, it was, a, it was a cracker as well you know and it was um it just playing with ma- massive confidence to be honest you know and he's, he had a great league and to bring it into the championship you know it's, it's sometimes it, players find it hard to sort of transfer that into the championship form you know when the team get when the intensity is higher the pressure's on so to do that and you know the conditions are quite tough regarding sort of kicking points and that as well so to be able to do that and, and pull it out and score one nine I'd, I'd, I'd have to say Paddy Lynch would be the, my Matt player the uh, week anyway. Want to be yourself Mr Kennedy? Yeah just echo what Joe says there it's probably hard to call on the other two because I haven't, I haven't watched those games but some of those scores that Paddy was hitting is fantastic you know um Fair enough. Conor McManus emulated him in the second half from that one out in the left hand side. It was almost like anything you can do, I can do as well. But no, some fantastic yeah. kicking. Um, even one there with the wind, yes, but it was probably about 50 yards out and it was still claiming over the bar. Yeah. It kind of felt yesterday, and I know obviously Paddy Lynch has been on the Cavan team since what, 2021, 2022, but it kind of felt maybe yesterday was the start of Paddy Lynch and maybe the end for Conor McManus, Mr. Sheridan, to a degree. Yeah, look, it's um, know, as, a, as a fantastic. Career, Just don't say that to Mister. Don't say that to Kevin McKernan. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say no more. <laughs> he's had he's had a great career, and look, whatever he does, you know, he always is money enough in the egg. So it was uh, it's probably a tough one for him to take, especially. But you know, at the end of the day, um, Mon are probably raging hot favourites getting into this game. You know, so you, you've got to look at what what was the sort of overall reason for their lack loss of performance you know i think the first half when you were looking at the game um they probably were just taking it for granted that everything they would just kick on we'll hold them off hold off but you know the, the wind was very strong and to be fair Ma, uh Cavan done a lot of good stuff and um, worked very hard off the ball put the pressure on man and turned over a lot of ball and, and it was a great team team ethic on sort of from top to back top to top to uh, the top of the full forward line all the way to the full back line you know and it was hunting in packs and you know Monon could have had a, had a couple of great chances now to be fair but you know just didn't take them and Cavan snuffed them out and sort of when they needed to get the scores at the right time they they, they kicked on and it was, it was a great game it was end to end you know it was um, especially se- second half when it opened up a wee bit um, you know it was great to see the two teams grab each other but you know Cavan would be delighted today the, the only problem is they're going to play throw now in the next game so it's you just gotta get an element and go and and see how things go. But it's a it's a massive confidence booster and you know, I'm sure the Cavan boys will be will be back themselves going in against Toronto now. Yeah, absolutely. I suppose there's only probably one place to start over the weekend in the Ulster Senior Football Championship preliminary round yesterday in Clonus, as Joe was mentioned a couple of sets ago. It was Monaghan against Cavan. It was Cavan three twelve, Monaghan one twelve. 
off and that was full time. So obviously we, people come. I, I thought it was going to go to extra time with stages. Jesus, it was a very di- tight route, um, and especially at the end. But yeah, Calvin got the win in the end. And as the aforementioned, Polly Lynch kicked uh, one nine. Pork Falk probably scored one of the best goals probably at the season so far. And lots of quality coming out of Calvin. I suppose from the modern end of things, it probably just wasn't one of the better performances. And I was saying to Joe offline just kept before you jumped on Kev that maybe the maybe the rivalry and the bit of kind of spice from this game has slightly gone out to a degree, obviously with Monon losing a couple of personnel over the years. So maybe it's not the rivalry it was potentially years ago, but and then obviously the talking points coming into this game as well, obviously maybe the the lower kind of crowds going, I think there was only 8,000 people or 8,000 tickets sold or attendance in uh, Clones Justice. So that obviously, you know, kind of speaks volumes maybe for the split season, how it's working out at the minute, but um, a good win for Cavan nonetheless, uh, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah, I thought it was a brilliant win for Cavan. I think Cavan got, um, particularly in the first half, I said, I was listening to the BBC, and Michael Murphy, I think it was the only one maybe saying, look, Cavan are still in this. The rest were saying, you know, pa- uh, Paddy Lynch was the only person to score, and they hadn't scored from play, and make my big song and dance out of it. But I don't think you could probably watch on TV, you certainly couldn't appreciate in real life what the conditions were like and how, how bad that wind was. You could see the flags, and they were just, you know, they were at right angles, like they were, they were flying. But I think that from a Cavan perspective, their first half performance in terms of running with the ball, I thought was fantastic. I thought getting that ball from the fence up into the forward line, yes, Paddy Lynch was left up there by himself on a number of occasions, but that's that's what you had to do. You, know, you had to drop players back in order to protect that lead and get in two points down was at half time was fantastic. Knowing you probably had to win the second half. I think we're, we might suggest on the, the call the other day, John, um, Monaghan are very, very slow in their play. And in the first half, for an average Monaghan point, it was coming in around about one minute and 25 seconds. That was Rodby's phase of play. Now, you look at the, the top teams, like the Dublin, even um, Kerry and Derry, they're getting points rattled off within 40 seconds. You know, their average change is probably around about 50 seconds. So it's, it's a significant dip in it. And that's been a form throughout the league. Whenever Cavan went the second half, Cavan, Cavan had increased that. They were getting points within... 30 seconds and 40 seconds went 50. Only three of their points in the second half went over one minute. So their speed, cabin speed in the second half was a lot quicker. I was surprised that actually they dropped off um, Monaghan's kick out in the second half. They were completely dominating midfield. Um, apart from the, the two balls that went out over the lane from O'Rourke, they they done really well in controlling that middle cabin. They had it all sorted up. Any long, any long kickers were coming in. Generally speaking, the ones were staying in play, they were winning and getting up the pitch. Those were getting in dangerous positions for them. So from the drop back so far and allowed Monaghan just to walk out, surprised me a bit. But, and I think it almost cost them. They ended up, I don't know if you, I can I can show the stats on it there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just going to, I was just, I was just waiting for you to give me the go ahead. I'm not sure I can, I can rattle through them first and see where we are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me see now. Uh, select help to share. Uh, where are we go now? Window entire screen. Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, and yeah, where are we go there now. So this one here. This yeah. is uh, this the first one. Is that the, that's the first one? Yeah. Yeah. So that's Kevin perfect. in the first half. That's Kevin going out. Um, you can see there that you know in terms of their total kickouts, they hit eight. Or is that Monaghan? Sorry, Kevy, is that Monaghan? No. Monaghan, yes, sorry, Monaghan. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They had one eight, which is fine and grand. Um, they got coming away from it. Uh, they had four scores from actually turnovers. They went in half time and seven scores. Three of the scores came from their own kickout. But if you look into the second half of it, which is the next screen, John. Next screen. <laughs> we're, get, we're getting very fancy, here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't really see it in that, but I won't share it with anybody. There's yeah. two turnovers. You'll just so we're, we're very, um, very begging as the right hand side. Captain or Monaghan are playing right to left in this occasion, but there's at least four opportunities. You can see the middle on the left hand side is pretty clear, so that would indicate that Cavan are doing really well in terms of keeping them outside the scoring zone. But there is two turnovers deep inside the scoring zone, inside the D. And there's also two that were, one was a free and one was a 45. One went way by begging and one got caught in the wind and dropped short as well. They were four opportunities that all came from short kickouts and it could have cost Cavan 
um, dearly, particularly given the time that it was in there. That their cabin school came at the right opportunity. It was just after one of those that went wide, and had they went, had uh, that one had went over, I think Monaghan would have, you know, got that wee bit of momentum going again. If we look at Cavan, and, <coughs> yeah. however, so Cavan, you know, they in the first half they, um, I think it was two went out over the sideline. One was a short and one was a long from a kick out. But under them conditions, you know, what the the one that actually went out the first time was a pretty spectacular kick. Just happened that it, it, it carried on through. But you can see that they're being forced down the, the left hand side of the pitch. That was probably an indicator of where the the, um, the wind was blowing into it as well. All their activity came from down the left hand side of the pitch. It's where we've seen actually Lynch's great point in the second half or in the first half. And equally, it's the same position we've seen where McManus had his great point in the second half. But you can see just in the edge of the square there, there's two wades also in there in the first half. So there. Cavan did have the just opportunity. Just there and there. Yeah. yeah. So you can see where they're coming from. Cavan, we're getting up that pitch and we're getting deep inside that zone. If you go to the, the, the last screen then, yeah, yeah. this is Cavan in the second half. And you can see I called it a half time where Beth thought Cavan had to hit 15 shots, at least 15 shots in the second half to be able to chance to win it. They only hit 13 shots in the second half, but their their conversion rate was absolutely unreal. 77% of those 13 shots just in the second half. That's why they didn't need 15 to stay in front. Even if they had been you know, the, the scores on it, they still want to go over, get over the lane. But you can see this throughout the middle of that, where the, the red sort of squares are. They're the kickouts, the long kickouts that Cavan actually won. So in the middle of they're completely dominating the middle inside. Um I was surprised that they didn't try to put Began under more pressure against whenever he's playing against the win. That was one thing it did cause me a bit of a shock, but um they they got away with it. They got away with it. And it, it might sound, you know, that, that is one thing. But fair play to Cavan because they 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 reduce Monaghan's opportunities an awful lot. They mm-hmm. kept them outside of the scoring zone, bar those sort of four opportunities that were missed. The rest of them are trying to find that McManus um, sort of range out on the right hand side, left hand side in the first half, and then trying to get him in the second half. But Cavan shut the door and they've done really, really well at getting those turnovers. I just would like to see them turn them over a wee bit higher up the pitch. I did think they dominated the middle, especially where Darren Hughes had to go off with the unfortunate injury he had. I thought Cavan had a great opportunity to clean up, but they came good in the end. They seemed to get over the lane a lot quicker and their speed of transition in the second half helped by the eight of kicking the ball. And um, whenever Began came out, it created a couple of opportunities in there for them. So overall, it was, it was a great performance from them. Cavan had a better split. So Cavan had half their scores, come, half their shots and half their scores coming from turnovers and their own kick out. Whereas um, Monaghan tended to get a bit more from actual turnovers. That means that they've either won the Monaghan kickout or else they they turned Monaghan over whenever Monaghan have had, or turned Cavan over whenever Cavan had the ball. They weren't doing a great deal under their own kickout, which again shows you how well that um, Cavan actually did set up. Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> excellent work again, uh, Mr. Kennedy. I have to say, that that is that is brilliant. That's really, really good work. And I suppose obviously, uh, if anyone wants to get in contact with uh, Mr. Kennedy on Twitter, uh, GA Tracker app, and then uh, Instagram, GA Tracker app. And my God, he will he will sort you out because that is top class. Analysis, and we will get out of that there. Perfect. And yep, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I am just hearing my voice just back hearing. there. Uh, all good. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. And I suppose yeah, the, the, the game, yeah, the game itself, obviously, uh, Mr. Kennedy, and the, the first half, obviously, Monaghan like, were leading it going into half time. Cavan probably did need a good kind of stare in half time team talk, but Cavan, as I said, as I said on Twitter, like they re- did really have a good go in the second half. Where it was the draw with Monaghan and kind of forced the issue. And I suppose you, I said to you at half time that Cavan were kind of going maybe sideways and lateral, probably going back to the old style of football, but maybe patience was a virtue, but. The second half performance really was very good. Mr. Sheridan, do we have you, still have you? Can you hear me? I, ju- I just can't see you. Yeah, I'm just frozen. Give me two. No, but, uh, but yeah, Mr. Kennedy, suppose, what did you make of Calvin's suppose, second half, I suppose, push on? Um, I thought I thought their setup in the first half was what it needed to be. I thought against those conditions and everything else, I thought that they were it needed to be. They, Apart from the, sort of the, last, the last three scores that Monaghan had, we're on the back of each other, you know. They just before going in at half time, Monaghan rattled off three scores consecutively in the space of maybe about five or six minutes. I don't mind if a team goes 
against a breeze like that or a storm like that call, but you want, I don't mind if a team goes for 10 minutes without scoring if they're playing into that breeze, so long as they don't concede an awful lot, because it's always going to be a game of two halves. You're always going to get your opportunities from in the second half. And whenever Cavan did in the second half get their opportunities to use the win, they did kick the ball in. They did kick that ball in and knew that Begum would come off his leg. Begum was caught out two or three times. Um, you know, there was a, a bad shot from about 45 yards out, but you have to try those. Mm, yeah, absolutely. The only thing that surprised yeah. me was they dropped off Monaghan's kick out with the win. We see whenever Began did kick that, was it was about 50 yards out. He did kick a ball and it, it hung up in there and it only landed maybe on the 21 or maybe as far as the 13. So against the wind, he's probably only able to kick it 40 yards. If that's a case, whenever, um, if that was a case against the wind for that free, then you're reducing the size of the pitch that Began's going to be kicking into. You know, he's not against the wind. He's only going to be kicking at the most 40 yards. With the wind, he could probably kick at 70 yards. You know, there'd be no problem with it. So I get them being conservative um, in the first half. But in the second half, I would have pushed on and put a bit more pressure onto him. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, in fairness, I, have to, I was very impressed because in fairness, I, I definitely, at just at half time now, I was quite frustrated maybe with how things were going and just, it, it just felt like very kind of boring and I know we were kind of aware of first issue in the first half, but it just kind of was going backwards and maybe kind of sidewards and maybe some of the balls that were going in were just, you know, you know, just not not, not going yeah. into the breadbasket, I suppose, but it, was, it definitely was a frustrating watch from a calving end of things in the first half, Mr. Kennedy. Probably, yeah, I would say so. Um, as a as a fan, you're probably wanting to do a lot more. As a neutral, sort of watching from um, a coaching perspective in terms of what I would learn from it, I, I would I would give my team the same, the same instruction. Hold on to the ball. Hold mm-hmm. on to the ball and play about it. The longer you have the ball, the less that opponents are going to score. You know, the last thing you wanted was for Monaghan to be hitting 15, 16 shots in that half. That's the last thing that anybody wants. So if it is Sabre's ball, yes, the end product probably isn't there. But it's energy stopping too. You know, you could see the the, the running from from Calvin was hard. It was aggressive. But they knew they were going to be doing a lot of running in the second half as well. So I thought they got the first half spot on from a, a tactical sort of point of view as a neutral. Not as a fan. I can understand why you can get frustrated with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, obviously. Uh, Joe Sheridan, obviously, you would have to be very impressed by Paddy Lynch's performance. As you, at the four mentioned, the the one ninety kicked, and I suppose his presence, his kick, and then even the first half kicking into that gale force wind that was blown off across the field. And as a full forward for many years yourself, you definitely would have been impressed. Oh, absolutely, you know, I, I think so. The cat, the way Cabin were playing, they were they were making runs from deep. They were creating the space. They were coming off the shoulder. You know, there were diagonal runs which were sort of blocking off to give Paddy that chance to come looping and, and they'd done that a couple of times, especially in the second half when they were sort of trying to get on top and uh, the game was tight. You know, Cavan were breaking. They were, they were the high intensity as we spoke about. You know, they got the turnovers, as Kevin was saying, in around that D area, up the top of the D, just inside the 45 and Monum were trying to press, but Cavan got so many bodies back. It was just literally, it was, it, it was more sheer numbers around and enough tacting and high intensity stuff going on and allowed Cavan to attack and there, were, there was a glimpse of Derry in it you know when you look at what Derry are doing um, they're getting the tackles on the high intensity and they are breaking and they're all going and you know it's, it's, it's exactly what um, Cavan saw they were trying to achieve in, in, in the game on Sunday as well so it was great for Cavan um, you've got to hand it to Galligan as well to be fair like, you know mm. would have come under a lot of pressure last year obviously taking the team I myself, I probably would have said it was probably a bit close, a bit soon, but you know, he's obviously gained a lot of respect from the players to be able to come in and do that and, and sort of jump in and, and, and take a scalp like Monon in your first championship game, which is which is a great achievement. So it's um there's obviously a lot of work being done. Um it's and it just shows like even Paddy Lynch's goal at the end, they could have held it on. They should have said, Right, we can you know, try and try and hold off and hold off and just keep ball, keep ball. They went for it, you know. The the game was the game was probably over if they held the ball anyway, you know, but they went for the goal, took it on and it just showed the confidence in the team as well, you know, which is which is great to see because you see enough teams just over and back and slowing up and keep it down, arm up, everyone's doing the dub and put the arm up and run around and stand there for 60 seconds and we're just going at it and, and, and trusting the players around you and having the confidence to go at it. So it was, it was great to see that, especially the last couple of minutes in the game. But, you know, it's... Um, You've got to look at what what's happening with Monaghan. Like you know, they fell off a cliff. The league wasn't a great 
performance at all. Obviously, we spoke about through, throughout the last couple of months, but you know, begging coming back did that unsettle things. I can only imagine that. Imagine being a, the keeper who was in, who was there for the last three months, and then all of a sudden, you know, Rory comes back. And look, there's no disrespect to Rory; he's, he's an all-star keeper and he's a fantastic player. But it's just the disruption in a squad that. It allows, OK, if you're going to go off and come straight back into the team, you know, what does that say to the players that are there as well? So, fair enough. If things weren't going well at half time, bring them on. But to throw them in was a big shout now. And fair enough, if he'd won the game, no, no one would have said a word because, look, he kicked a couple of great scores. He um, he also he did a great save in the first half and down low and into the bottom corner, which is a great save, you know. So, he sort of backed up what you were expecting that anyway, often, you know. So, it just... It's whether that caused a bit of aggro, you know, among the squad, but it's um, it's a fantastic result for Cavan, and you know they'll be delighted today going into it and also quarter final. Joined by Gail Drive, journalist Michael McMullen. How are you, Michael? Sorry, we bit late to the party. Uh, how's things, lads? John McMahon, one very happy man this evening, I would say. <laughs> oh, we're both happy. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Joe's very happy. Two, two championship wins, man. We're delighted. Happy days. We, it, we know what it's like to be Derry now. <laughs> oh, here it is. Derry. Derry, it's just things are going well at the moment now. But it was a good, one down, good one for Calvin yesterday, definitely. Yeah, you're impressed. I suppose you have a good weekend, Mal. How, how's all with you? Oh, all's all good. I, it was obviously a, a slow burner, as quite a lot of the games are, but I think Kevin's sheer energy and, and, and the fact they turned over Monaghan and ran at, ran at them, I thought they thoroughly deserved it. Um, albeit it, it probably needed Jerry Smith's goal to actually turn the game the final time, but I think I don't think Monaghan can have, can have any complaints, to be honest. Hmm. I suppose we are touching on to the we're talk, talk about the Calvin Mona game at the minute. I suppose Mali, I suppose your all thoughts. And obviously, uh, Paddy Lynch, I uh, just asked Joe Sheridan, kick 1 9. Very, very impressive form at the minute, has to be said. Uh, it was a brilliant performance yesterday. And I'm not sure what you were saying before I joined, but like even the free before half time, I know Manzi scored one after half time, but the fact that they were so reliant on him, it was a huge score. I remember looking at the scoreboard at 5-4 and thinking Cavan's in a really good place here but I don't know what you thought John as a Cavan man but he's had he's really fairly in control but Darren Hughes close he's out a couple of times he's took a couple of ropey enough shots Gary Mohan had an interception he's maybe could have been two or three points up at half time mm. Mm. and then obviously, yeah. obviously obviously Began made the save but obviously Gary Rourke did the same at the other end so yeah. sort of balanced it out yeah, day, Jed. But as I said, Kev, earlier on there, you know, obviously with the first half, the Cavan probably were kind of playing, you know, that kind of defensive sort of football in terms of kind of going back and protective kind of football and maybe not having a cut. Whereas I think in the second half, Mal, of course, you were at it, maybe you've seen the kind of ferocious nature of the game. But I think in the second half, Cavan really did force the issue and just kind of played a bit out of themselves compared to the first half. Because I think in the first half, it looked like it was really sort of protective football. They're probably scared of Beggins' big balls over the top. I think outside of the, he had a brilliant kick out to Jason Irwin down the right wing. But yeah. outside of that, they basically forced him to go short. Mm-hmm. And um, I suppose you're always going to be fearful for that. And then on the other side of it, like Gary Rourke had a nightmare first kick out that basically told him exactly what way the one was operating and then settled well. But um, the wee spell, uh, and I was chatting to a few of the Cavan people afterwards, and they had a spell after half time whenever Lynch was up one on one with Killian Lavelle, and Killian Lavelle was marking him with his back to the ball, just watching Paddy left, right, left, right, and a load of space. And I don't think Cavan used him enough in the way that Keane Reilly hit the ball to, 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 to Faulkner for the goal. I thought that space was there for a good wee while, and only it's always easy in the stand when you're up that wee bit higher to see it, but I thought that ball was on quite a bit. And then obviously whenever Darren Hughes was gone, it was definitely on all the time. He was a huge loss when he went off. Yeah, now go of course we wish Darren Hughes the very very best okay. recovery. I don't think I don't think it's as bad as the first. As I know on the TV and maybe people being at the game, it, it looked very bad. But I don't think, by all accounts, things that Carol Kane said last night that it's not as bad as first thought. Um, Mal. I well that's it was, it was glad to hear that because I actually spoke to Kieran briefly after it. I saw Kieran come along. With Darren's bag, it just says, "Hope your fella is not uh, not as bad as it looks." And 
as he says, he says it was one of those balls they just had to go for. And oh, Faulkner, and I think I think it was James Smith. I think neither of them took a, a backward step, and mm-hmm. it was just you know an absolute crash. Just and uh, I'm not sure if it's related. I forgot to ask uh, Raymond afterwards, but James Smith went off within I don't know two or three minutes as well. So he he, he felt the brunt of it. But um, no, as you said, you, you definitely you, you wish Darren Hughes a, a speedy recovery because. Uh, even the positional sense he would have had in that second half, you wonder would Cabin had the same freedom, or, or maybe they would have because they had they brought an awful lot of energy to that second half, which was which was the reason why they won it. Hmm. Yeah, seen a good tweet. Just uh, sorry, Joe. Go on. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Coming off as well was 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 a wee bit strange. They like the last Darren, and then they took Jack off as well. You know, they struggled to get scores on in the last sort of 10, 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jack was. He was having a good game. He was give he was giving the full back line a full a full roast, and now at times there's a lot of space. But um, I, I thought it was a bit strange. Yeah, you go to sort of score getter to take him off for 15 minute scores. It's a tight game. Like it was, it, it was one of them games. That if if you got a couple of good scores, it, it would have given you momentum. So it was it was a strange decision now to to see him taken off. I actually can't remember what the score was at that stage, Joe. Maybe it was a case that they thought. I actually not sure on that. You know, sometimes you make a substitution if you feel you're in control. I'm not sure. I, I can't yeah. honestly remember, but um, uh, it would have been useful. Like, like, like towards the end, they still they, they still had chances before Paddy Lynch's final nail. They still had chances, and maybe maybe Jack made a nail one of those. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was definitely a, it was definitely a good day. And I suppose obviously Mal in the future kind of talk boys going into the game and I suppose I kinda of tweeted just and oh got it got, got a lot of reaction in terms of like the crowd and maybe kinda of ticket price and you were kinda of saying last night about you know the lack of people going to these games and you know, it's an ultra championship game. We only had what eight thousand people in uh, St. Sharon's St. Park, Clonus, and obviously it holds a capacity of twenty eight thousand. Suppose Mal. So, what was your I suppose feedback in terms of people and not going to Clonus yesterday? Well, the word seemed to be like the first couple of people I met on the street, they talked about 6,000 has been the figure, and that was really worrying. And I was sort of surprised then when, when, when the Ulster Council representatives came up with the attendance figure. You know, they, they, they come up to the press box and give it out for you to publicise. But do um, you know what? I, I've been beating this drum for quite a while, and I, I wrote that exact line in a Gaelic Life article just a wee while ago, and I'm going to beat it again. The GA has to do something about this. Now, there's one side of the debate, and it's to do with the standard of play. But the the committee that met last week have got a questionnaire out that we can all fill in: supporters, players, press, whatever. Yeah. And that's that's up for us to complain about the state of play or not, whatever. That's one aspect. The other aspect is the money, mm. and the fact there's so many games. And the other fact is the way it is now. That you could have three championship games, and maybe in West Meath's case, four championship games in the one paycheck for a family. Yeah. Like that's that's real. Like like, and I'm conscious of the fact that I don't pay in the games. I go. Like I'm I'm I know that. I people say, oh, you don't you get in for nothing, but that's that's not the point. It should be cut in half. If we do cut the if we do cut the ticket price in half, does it double the attendance? I don't know that it does, but I think there should be something. We can't keep milking supporters. We can't. Be- yeah, because uh, Miss uh, Kevin Kevin Kennedy said there last week. I think what what did you say, Kev? If there's two games, so you get maybe you go to one game, then you go your the second game half price, or you know, I I think something will yeah. need to be done. I think I think something will need to be done because I think obviously I know weather dependent. Obviously, we just gale force wins all weekend, but I just think it is staggering that you know Clonus and my God, the terraces are empty. Even I think I think I, I tweeted with the stand being basically empty. Well, mm-hmm. it, was, it was relatively full, but I just think something will, as Mal said, will need to be done, uh, Mister Kennedy. Yeah, you need to get Santa face people and give it. I mean, if you're asking for, it says twenty quid in this Saturday to watch Antrim and. Down. If I'm bringing myself along with my wee lad and they, you know, my niece who she plays the ladies football, there's you know, f- f- you know, forty quid, fifty quid before you even get into stand because you're going to go down, you're going to buy them lunch or their dinner or whatever it might be in McDonald's or go to the shop and get your juices and all beforehand, and you're getting in. Now that is because I like going to matches and, and seeing it, but it doesn't incentivize the promotion of Gaelic games. You know, there's. We get think any other match here. We have Gale Fast get on. Gale Fast, they bring the kids from the primary school in and their kids play. Most of the parents don't want to be there, 
they still have to pay in to watch their child for five minutes at half time. You at that that's a brilliant opportunity to say, come along, get involved here. If it's up in St John's or whatever it is, there's your local club, there's details. Why don't you go down and get involved? That that's how you increase participation. That's how you engage in it. That's why Antrim at the minute, whenever the matches are on, there's probably about two hundred people who don't want to be there. They're only there because their kids are playing. So there's an opportunity that you promote Gaelic games, that you you get clubs involved, you get under you get parents who are maybe no not affiliated to any club. Get them along to um, some of those games as an opportunity, but it can't all be coming down to cost. Cost is dear. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about here traveling down to Kerry just for a couple of their, their games on it, and that'll cost a couple of hundred pounds per weekend. But that's me willing to do it. That's me going by myself. I had to bring the family. Jesus, you know, well, she won't let me bring them all anyway, given that it's a football weekend. But uh, <laughs> it, it'll cost you some coin. Mal says it's not even that it's this day of the summer, it's within a month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's within a month. Mm. I, I like I like that idea. Uh, if you could explain a wee bit more about incentivizing, I think it's I suppose it's the same as they had them for the McKenna Cup. We had a pass. It was so many. I think I knew the Ulster. The Ulster Council, for example, at club championship season have a a streaming pass of sixty pound. Like for somebody like me that watches every single game, that's great. Like that's great value. So I'm assuming that's what you're thinking of, Kev. Something where there's a yeah. The one I said about the. It was a reference to the league finals last week, Mal, is that if you get a ticket for the Saturday, mm-hmm. then you can buy a ticket for the Sunday for five euro. Something ridiculous. Um, great, great idea. You know, that you walk in, your, the TA is going to make money on your sausage rolls, your hot dogs, your burgers, whatever it is, when people get in there. And even if people didn't go to it, they woke up the next morning and said, you know what, I'm not going to go to that. That's fine. It's only a five they're losing it on, but they're going to be, I imagine, if I'm a parent, watch, or I'm a supporter watching that game, I'm going to say, Give me two tickets just in case I decide to go the next day because that's some value. Mm-hmm. And the same. But I, 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 sorry, Kevin. I, I think there's a bigger picture to this as well. I, I think the GA, they're all saying, yeah, we 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 love the provincial championships. We want to keep the, but they're literally they're showing it no respect. So people aren't mm-hmm. stupid. They're looking at this saying they're just trying to get that out of the way until we get the big stuff happening in sort of the All Ireland series in what six weeks time. People don't see that. They're like, right, Graham, we'll just get by the provincial championships. If they, I have not, I've seen no advertising. I've seen nothing for the beginning no. of the championship. Nothing, be, you know. So it is part of the vibe and buzz around it, like you know. It's yeah. going to be very interesting next year, Joe. With no, it's only the three. It's only Mayo, Westmead, obviously yesterday, and um, who was the other team? It was playing Kev. Yeah, I forgot. I tweeted it last night, but I forgot what it was. But there was three teams. Of, oh, sorry. Will I just say who's playing yesterday mm-hmm. for you? No. I was going to get beat yesterday, but they played in Leinster in the Leinster games. You Westmead, Wicklow, Longford, uh, Longford and Mead, and Wexford and Carlow. It was it was Wick, or Westmead. Westmead played last weekend, got beat this weekend. Um, last year was Mayo, got beat, played in the league finals, got beat the next week. You, I think next year is going to be a real question mark over the integrity of league finals. If, for example, say Monaghan find themselves in a league fan, Division 2 league final next year, and then they have the first round of the Ulster Championship the next week, you, if you're paying 20 quid in, 25 quid in to watch a league final or 30 quid in for the double header, and Vinny Corey sitting there going, do you know what, I have Ulster Championship next weekend. The, the pattern here is that if you play one week, you tend to get beat the next week. I'm going to put out a second team. But we're already promoted. I could see that you know, the, the integrity of league finals being called into question too. And if people are paying into that, it's it's going to be a waste for them. Like people are talking about Dublin and Derry's league final being like glorious than it was, but it was perfect because Dublin had their first big game for about three weeks. Like they they do championship game for three weeks, and I think Derry, maybe two weeks, three weeks, and Derry had none for the same. So that was perfect. It was. If, yeah, if, yeah. If both those teams are out the next week. It would have been a completely different, um, and, and Mickey Hart admitted that. He says, we were lucky we had that break. Yeah. And you listen to the, the <laughs> comments of Kevin McStay saying, you know, he was very adamant throughout the year. I do not want to be in a league final. Mm-hmm. Like it yeah, is the next and, game. And it is next last game. Last year and the yeah. year before, everyone was raving about how great the leagues were. You know, it's going to take over the championship. The, the, team, the, the games are a lot better. Now it's nearly like, should we, we'll get the first six games out of the way, and then whatever happens, happens, and try not to win them to... To not get to a league final, and that is it's exactly what Kevin was saying. It's sort of taken, sort of the the glass off the, the the league now. What a what it was a great competition. Now it's sort of like right, try not to do too well, and we'll, we'll concentrate on championship. Then that's 
It's not really the way it should be. You should be delighted to get to a league final, compete for the for a sort of a, a national title, and and then kick on. But be able to have that time to be able to mm-hmm. come out of the, the league finals. Like the GA should surely be able to say, okay, fixtures are in place, but if you make the league final, you'll get an extra week. We'll just change around the fixtures to suit that and move on from there. You know, it's 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 easy done. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that it's in the comic finals a week before the Ulster final. You know, I mean, obviously, commercially, it probably wouldn't be viable to have all four provincial finals on the same day. But there is a, there's a difference in the timeline for it. You know, you only had one Ulster game yesterday, whereas you had three Connacht games. Mm-hmm. If you had something like two on a Saturday and two on a Sunday and stagger them, yeah. get them all on, because there's not going to be that many people go to both. No. So, so at least take a chance that the people who will go to both will go to a game on a Saturday and one on a Sunday. And whenever Casement was up and running, there was nothing better than Friday night lights under Casement. I know we're traditionalist, but but we've moved from our Sunday to our Saturday. A Friday night under and a Casement like come championship time for club action that is was fantastic. And you see actually in down where their club leagues are on a Friday night, they get some attendance because I think people actually enjoy kicking off the weekend by going to a football match on a Friday night. Mm. You could make yeah. a weekend out of it. Mm. Yeah, like it's crazy. And obviously, Cav and Monin, like them games back in the day, like in 13, 15, 17, and 19. I know obviously COVID had a bit to say in that, like in I think the 2020 game, obviously no crowds. But I just think there, the, you couldn't get a stand ticket for love and money back in them mm-hmm. years. And like Clonus was full, Breffney Park was full. And it was just, it just, it looked so odd. Uh, like even from people watching on there yesterday, like with, with the thing just being just empty, I suppose, from your viewpoint, Mal, and I suppose getting the talk around the press box and maybe kind of looking around, was what was the kind of atmosphere like? Was it a bit gloomy or? It was strange because, as I says to somebody beside me, I looked at my watch and there was half an hour to throw in. Yeah. And and both and the the ground was empty, and we were saying like you would you just wouldn't believe that this game started in half an hour's time. There was the crowd that you would have in. Um, no word of a lie, the dub the stand was absolutely packed for Derry and Dublin ninety minutes before they played in the league game up in Celtic Park. I know it's after the league games, yeah. Do you know, whereas this one here, and then the, the the other thing is whenever both teams come out for their second warm up. You know, with their jerseys on, there was the crowd in. They didn't really thought this is just the initial warm up. These boys are going to come back in the game, and when they come out, this place is going to be f- fuller. Yeah. But it wasn't the case. And funny, Raymond Gallagher was actually asked about the crowd afterward, and he says he says he wasn't shocked by the crowd. And I, I can't remember his exact words here, but the gist of it was that the league and the championship were close, too close together. And he was talking from Cavan, and he says Cavan supporters have a great, great supporters most years and all always have but he says they're too close together and the league has a very long process of games and he says look hopefully there'll be more out the next day you know he, he didn't he, he didn't speak strongly of it but he just he gave his opinion but he, he honestly as i say he said he wasn't shocked by the, by the crowd but mm. and I, I i would say surely if you ask players would you rather play in front of that or a packed clonus they're going to say packed like the competitive nature of somebody wants the buzz. Like Malachy Clerkin was sitting beside me in the press box and he tweeted today something that, that um something that Raymond shouted out at Oshin Kernan. Oshin Kernan Castle Rahan, can you can you sit here? Yeah. Imagine us hearing that in the press box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine, could, yeah. you know, imagine being able to hear that. Like that's ridiculous. Could hear could everything right. Could hear everything Ray was saying as well. Like, God, he wasn't like, I don't know, insulting somebody or, you know, he could literally hear everything. Like, yeah. If you look at this weekend, Donegal and Derry, this, um, or for next weekend, I believe it's it's almost sold out already or it's going through clubs. Is that much? You know, it just shows probably where the hype is or the expectation. Exactly. Yeah. You you compare that to what what the attendance now will be in in Co Park on on Sunday, there'll be 25,000 at, like, because well, the like some, expectation of Dublin winning by 20 points like someone messaged me earlier on saying did you see the message I don't know one of them bloody fan boards thing and someone says uh, do you think there'll be county players playing this weekend because um, you know for the interim games and if I was like no not a chance through the championships in six days and he went oh geez, I thought it wasn't until the end of the month you know that, yeah. that's a GA fan saying that so there's no publicity around or there's not the, the, the sort of build up for it Here's a question for you. Um, I'm obviously working in the media. Um, what what publicity is not there? Like, for example, I'm just you. I'm going to, and I'm not. I'm not trying to get at anybody. I'm just trying to find out what people think. Like, Kevin played Mona, and we had a podcast, and just talking Gaelic life here. And 
we had a podcast with a couple of people on it with previews. There's tweets to say it was on. Mm. What publicity is it is missing? Is it is it the overall publicity? Because I'm just interested in what the supporter thinks is missing in terms of selling the game. Gaelic Life done a really good preview last week. You guys done really well, I think, Mal. Um, mm. I think uh, Off the Ball done one. Kieran Hughes and Shawnee Johnson was on the Friday. Yeah. That was a good open chat with, uh, I think it was at, uh, Owen Sheehan and Adrian mm. Barry. But I think, as someone said it to me yesterday, RTE's previews of games is, like, I suppose, not great and probably where, it's, like, for the pundits at the have, it, yeah. should be, it should be at a higher level. Uh, BBC's wouldn't just be fantastic. I know you have the GA social, but, yeah, like, it, it, the bigger broadcasters should be doing a lot better. I think I think it's I think it's everywhere, but I'm just interested to see what's missing. Is it the promotion by the GA itself for the sponsors just or what is it? I, I think it's a national broadcaster thing. I think it should be on, on the TV, it should be broadcasted okay. every yeah. everything that you know you go into super value should be all over the place. It should be okay. it, should, it should be made to that just to give the people on the streets talk and get them discussing because from your own point of view, Mal, and on Gate at Life, when we're talking here, we, we're attracting people who are going to be going to them games anyway. Yes. It's the people who don't realise actually, oh, is the league, is the championship starting now? Sure, it's it's a, it's only April, so the championship's not starting for another two months. You know, a lot of yeah. people there are sort of still floating as if the championship not starting until June. You know, so it's to get them people on board, get them involved. Yes, the weather doesn't help at the minute. You know, it wouldn't entice anyone to go and watch any games. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's in general just trying to get that mindset because even for the people involved in the GA, they're finding it hard to realise when, when the games are on, you know. So imagine what people yeah. on, on the street who you're trying to entice and, and sort of build up support and sort of some sort of interest in going to the games because it's it's just non-existent at the minute. Yes, yeah, so what, you're, what you're saying is you need to have something on in the... Ad break in the six o'clock news every day. Yeah. Cronus this yeah, weekend. Yeah. You know, Breffley Park next weekend. Thurlis, whatever. Yeah. There's yeah, also time, yeah. there's also the aspect in terms. Of, okay, there, there's promotion going on, and there's expectation too. You know, I'm sorry to say if you were down at the Wicklow and uh, sorry Waterford and Tipperary game yesterday. I'm not sure what the attendance would be at that, but I'm sure it wasn't anywhere near as high as well it was even in Clonus. I don't think that too many Antrim fans will be travelling down to Newry on Saturday simply because the expectation of doing well probably isn't there. Um, and we're probably thinking, look, it's Ulster Championship is a free hit, but ultimately we're looking forward to the Touching Cup because he might get a run in that as well. But it, I think that you know there's there's the options for whenever teams are going well, Mal, you not too long ago, what, four or five years ago, Gary were playing in front of the 29 people. Yeah. You know, now there's an expectation, Derry, and football in Derry is booming. Yeah. Because people are expecting entertainment going to it and also success. Definitely. And uh, like, and, and the whole grand scheme of things in the provincial um, championship from a football point of view, like Munster with with the Hurlings, obviously, it nearly sells itself because it's, it's a brilliant competition. But outside of Derry playing Donegal, there's no real buzz, like, and and it's it's the Jim versus Mickey Hart thing, and as you say, like Derry are in the crest of a wave. Like I remember in the Division Four, Derry were at home to London, and myself and Oren Crumley and Mickey Wilson were interviewing the manager after the game, three of us. And I remember standing down in Tralee, and we were in, all interviewing Mickey Hart, and there was at least ten or twelve dictaphones standing because the boom was there. It was Tralee, mm. it was under lights, it was Derry versus Kerry, yeah. and so the Derry. The Derry game being sold out inside five minutes isn't. That's just an outlier, you know. That's just an outlier. It, it is an outlier. It, it, yeah. But also, you'll get it in Dublin at certain times. Ever Dublin are playing uh, not in Leinster, but come the um, the group stages or even in yeah. the final, Dublin once once there's I and mean, we carry are probably well renowned for not travelling until you know the semi final or also final. You know that's probably what mm. uh, a lot of people would say as well. But I know that. A manager who was looking after a county was playing on a, a, a provincial final. It was outside of Dublin, but it was a provincial final. He was sitting there having a cup of coffee and in the main town, and he says people are just walking past him, no flags up, no one even knew who he was. Yet he goes home to his home country, and even though it's a different provincial uh, game going on, there's flags up, there's a buzz about it. It's everything and anything to this um, county, but mm-hmm. in the particular county that he was Managing at that time, he says there was no buzz about it, there was no entertainment about it, there was no um, promotion of Gaelic games. And if you, in Antrim now, 
And it's not the GPO's fault. It's not Gail Foss's fault. It's probably a generational thing that was coming down the lane and we took our eye off the ball for 10 years. GAA is a very, it needs a pacemaker put in within Belfast. It's a very, very slow heartbeat. There's too many clubs. There's more of a strategic thing needs to go on. But in terms of numbers are actually participating in GAA now, it's a way, way down. And they're not doing an awful lot. To bring, they're doing bits, but it's disjointed. Like I said, the Gale Foss stuff is brilliant. Getting kids from local primary schools, probably not attached to any club mm-hmm. down to play in front of Antrim. But then charging a Romeo and Dottie in, you know, a, a 10 or a 12 pound to go and watch your son for 10 minutes. And then clubs again, clubs should be on to that and saying, here, come you down. We train this Friday or Sunday morning. Stop competing with soccer. You know, there, there's just a different argument for Antrim. For but, I think, but I think charging kids into games, like under 16s, that that's just, that's money grabbing at its finest. You could, yeah. you, you shouldn't be charging under 16s in the games. It's just crazy. Not like how, I, how is I, that incentivizing them, you know? I think the only reason why they do have some sort of charge, and I'm not defending them here, is to do with ticketing, so they know how many people to have for Stuarts. But at that yeah. stage, just have a non race ticket for a pound. They yeah, really give a free ticket ad- out, yeah. Yeah, yeah. say for free example, yeah. yeah, free ticket, or it's a pound simply for the admin fee of it, but, you know, have it essentially free. Because um, I, I do know you can't just have it, you just can't say, look, kids, turn up free, because you need to know how many to have. Yeah. But I agree with you, there shouldn't be a, a charge, or a very, very minimal charge. I was speaking to a parent of a Derry youngster who's playing at half time, and I can't remember what game it was. And I says, Do you get a ticket free or do you pay in? And he says, Oh, we get two free tickets. Now, I don't know if he's just got contacts or whether every parent gets it. I'm not sure. The person we're talking to would, would be would have GA circles, so I'm not sure if somebody throws them two tickets. No, I think I but, think they do, yeah, if they're involved. I think the parents are giving the tickets, yeah. As far as I know. So you're my cousins, we and maybe it's different. My cousins, we lot. He was playing there during the league, and his man, and dad, my cousins, never involved in GA at all. Nice seeing them to match. I was like, geez, what are you doing here? And they were saying that they were the real I was playing. They had to buy two tickets to win it. Well, that shouldn't be the way. And they're all, you know, Mal, you know, Kerrigan, the far side of the stand where the kids go on off the pitch. It's mm-hmm. great. Gil Foster doing well by bringing them into it. But, um, you know, having paying their, their parents paying. Get them in there, tell them what the GA is about, try and sign up as many kids as possible. Whenever I was in uh, St. John's, we started one of them, you know, biggest loser programs that they were going around and doing exercise and weight and round the doors flying at the people. Mm-hmm. Weight management, weight management. Plus, there's babysitting going on. And I know coaches don't like hearing that word, but I was saying them, use the coaches as babysitters. They're under sixes, under eight, and you can come out here and do your exercise. That was 10 years ago. A lot of them kids now are under 16, involved in the club. You know, we were the, had, had the parents for eight weeks, but the kids kept on coming back and coming back. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, there's a lot of work to do, lads. <laughs> there's a lot of work to do to get this way because there is because I think I think this weekend has definitely cast a light on that. But look at it's out of our hands, but it's definitely good to have a discussion about it. I suppose lads, we crack into the action in Leicester Senior Football Championship round one over the weekend. Very, very surprising result here, lads. It was Westmead 111, Wicklow 29 in Leash Higher and More Park. What a win for um Oshie McConville's Wicklow. I could believe it was when they seen this result coming true. Obviously, Desi Dolan last weekend was planning already after the league final for this game, and unfortunately, to come up short against Wicklow, Mr. Joe Sheridan. Yeah, it's another shock. Um, and it's happening now the last couple of years. A couple of shocks in the first round after teams, as we spoke about, being in leagues. Um, and Westmead is just is going to knock the stuffing out of them, to be honest. Um, yes, Wicklow. Ha- had, had shown a slight bit of improvement in the league. You know, they they, were, they had a strong finish to it. Um, and Oshin would be delighted. And, you know, I was listening to him after the game and he said, yes, there's a lot of heart and fight in that, but we have some good footballers as well, you know. So I, I was glad to hear that, that, you know, oh, she's just worked harder than Westmead today and sure Westmead didn't turn up. You know, he actually backed his players and said, look, we have some really good footballers here as well. You know, they got a, it, was, it was a bit of a smash and grab, I think. You know, they got the, the couple of goals at the right time, sort of, to kill off the game and it sort of it drove things on for them and it was um it was a great performance to sort of see it out because uh, Westmead come back at them and they were they were probably full value for the win in the end. Mm, absolutely, I stick with you uh, for this one, uh, Joe. It was Longford against Mead. It was Mead three nineteen, Longford three twelve in Glen Burrows Pierce Park. My God, Joe, a very very high scoring game here. And obviously, I think Mickey Quinn was saying, "Hey, today you score three twelve. You should probably expect to win a match." But that was not the case. And the worrying thing for me this weekend, they had the dubs. If Longford can do that to Mead, 
what's the Dubs going to do with Croke Park, Joe? Yeah, look, I, I think um, obviously great. It was it was it was a win for me. It was great to start off with a good win. Um, I think for ourselves to get three nineteen after not really kicking on and and scoring too highly in the league was it was a big plus for for Colum and the lads. Um, I did the, the couple of goals we give away were probably a couple of mistakes from you know high balls in that we didn't deal with too well. Um, and Longford just seen them out, so we probably should have. We'll probably do have a look at that. We're a wee bit open, but um, you know, it's great, great to get a win. You know, especially getting into Dublin this weekend. Um, Longford, you know, obviously are, aren't anywhere near what, what Dublin are. So yeah, we, we we're obviously going. The boys will have to have a look and sort of see where we need to close things off. You know, tighten up, and I'm sure the lads will have a plan for going into Sunday's game as well. So it's um, look, it's it's going to be a massive uphill task for for this weekend and. It's um I I don't know I, it, it it could be scary now to be honest the way Dublin have kicked on in the last couple of weeks and sort of probably six or eight weeks um they're really just getting going and I just seen a comment from Dean Rock last week saying that he doesn't even know how many lengths of championship he has which is Great. it's it's a quite a, it's a bit of a slight on on the championship now to be fair yes they they've kicked on and they've been obviously clean cleaning everyone out and in the lens of championship the last sort of 20 years but you know to give that respect there as well and not just to diss it i, I didn't like the comment now to be honest but um that's just where Dublin are at to be honest and you know they've just dominated and look unless our boys shut up shop and try and hold them off and i, I can't see Colin doing that to be honest um they'll probably try and have some sort of defensive setup in place but he probably will want to go and try and go at them as well and I could just leave gaps for, for Dublin to come at us um, on Sunday, unfortunately. Crazy comments there during the week last week, uh, Joe. I think it was the Leinster Council delegate was saying that the you know the Leinster championship uh, the Leinster championship is alive and well, and of course obviously Dean Rock's in there last week that he doesn't even know how many Leinster championships he does have. So as I said to Matthew Hurley last week, the problem is in front of us in front of us, we don't want to fix it. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, and it, it's I don't know what they're gonna do, to be honest. It's um they, they, they want to work on it, but they won't actually make the decision, you know, because the, the provincial councils have so much power and so much drive from it within. And, and I don't think the GA will uh, want to go near that. I think it's just it'll open a can of worms and where it will lead us to is another thing. So it's 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 going to be interesting, to be honest. Um, but the, the when, when we look at this weekend, we look at sort of last year as well. The provincials are just sort of a... A dying breed, and I love them. I love the provincial championships. I love what it brings. But if the GA aren't going to give it the respect that it deserves, and and, and allow teams to play and go at it and sort of create that buzz and not even promote, then it just sh- sort of shows how important it is for the for the top brass in the GA. And um, if they're going to get rid of it, go at it and get rid of it and and, and restructure the whole championship. But this sort of half hour chat chances sort of say, oh yeah, we we still we still feel that the provincial championships are important. It doesn't. It doesn't sort of. It doesn't show from from an outside person looking in, to be honest, because it just shows a lot, a lot of disrespect to the whole competition. So they may as well get rid of it if that's what they're going to do with it. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. So as we push on, lads, you had Wexford against Carlo. It was Wexford four nineteen, Carlo eight points in Chadwick's Wexford Park. A fantastic result for Wexford, but uh, Carlo football is in a lot of butter, especially after that result. And then the Connacht Senior Football Championship, lads, in the Gaelic Park yesterday, in New York, you had Mayo two twenty one, New York two six. Um, of course, obviously, Mayo uh, routine victory. We, we all probably expected that, unfortunately. But obviously, New York put in a good fight. And then you had an Avant Money Park. Sean McDermott, it was Sligo, 15 points. Leitrim, 6 points, I suppose. Mal, touching briefly onto this game. Obviously, Andy Moran, uh, his, he said after the game to Tom, Mar- Tom Parsons, is a good mate of his. Obviously, the head honcho of the GPA at the minute. And obviously, the turnaround that Leitrim had one week after getting, I suppose, hammered in a league final and then knocked out of the Connacht Championship. And, it's a quick turnaround, Mr. McBullen. It is tough. And I think I was listening to the examiner pod earlier on today, and I'm, I'm not sure where he said it, but I think Andy said something along the lines of he had only 22 players available for selection between injuries and then the under 20s, that whole thing where they're not eligible. But I think he he's managed in the under 20s. So if that's the case where they're trying to bring their under 20s through, he can sort of understand that. But... Um, 
I think Sligo, Sligo have obviously come in the back of two good under-20 teams, so they're starting to make a bit of progress, you know, and Tony Mack was chatting about, you know, what, what they had coming, so they'll be looking to build. They've now Galway, I think, in the next round, so, um, but, uh, I don't know, it's probably three horse race, Ross Common, Mayo and Galway, and the thing about it is, what do Galway and Mayo really know about themselves now? That they're a lot stronger than teams that they're, that they're expected to beat. So it's back to the whole debate again. But um, I think Mayo were mostly full strength over in, in, in the Bronx. But oh, yeah. um, no, I'll be interested to see that Sligo and Galway game. And I'm sure Sligo will be looking to get, you know, to, to trim that back from last year. And then obviously Galway have their own injury problems as well. So uh, it's a wee bit like the, the Cork Kerry game in Munster. You're sure looking forward to see and will there be a close in the gap there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then the other Connacht game over the weekend, lads. Oh God, this is not pretty reading in the Connacht Senior Football Championship quarter final on Saturday. It was Galway five twenty one, London nine points in McGovern Wait. Park. Race up, um, Mr. Kennedy. Need we say more? No, no, just. You know, thankfully Galway racked up the score they did because if they didn't have anything more than 15 points win, they would have been called into question about their own performance. I think, as I said last week, John, it's a it's a no win for everybody with Mayo playing New York and Galway playing London because if both of them teams, Galway and Mayo, don't rack up a score of 15 points, their form is called into question. Whereas if they do score any more than 15 points, it's almost lots of point in this fixture at all. You know, there's always going to be, uh, there's no never any positives come out of it, really. Yeah, absolutely. No winners from that game. Uh, absolutely. I suppose that's we we'll crack into this weekend's championship action in the Ulster Senior Football Championship quarterfinal on Saturday, April 13th. You have down against Antrim in Park Esler. Of course, the game is at 6 p.m. And of course, the game will be live on BBC Sport. And I, uh, the championship is here for Antrim, Mr. Kennedy. What are we thinking? Yeah, John, um, as I say, there's... We, probably get into this maybe as severe underdogs you know <clears throat> nobody's expecting anything 10 points which could have been a lot more in the league that down beat Antrim by it could have been up near you know 20 points in that so that's how far the teams were apart in the league but a lot will come back to what type of players Antrim can get back in and also who Dan can get back to you know Keanu Mooney was a big miss for them in the league final Rory McCann from Agagallon has come back for Antrim there Pat Shivers is back in they were all missing for that um game over down up in Kerrigan Park. Big big lads, big units. If they can sort of play some half-decent football on Saturday night, I don't think Antrim are... I mean, on form, they're without a chance. There's no other way I call it. They are without a chance. But if you're playing roughly in the same league as your opponents, you're, you're there or thereabouts. You know, um, Wicklow and Waxford, or Wicklow and Westmead probably showed that over the weekend. Will Antrim win? On form, no. But if they can get people back in the house, if they can shut up shop and learn from what Westmead done to down in Crook Park with a lot more kicking and things like that, and not not learn down in easy for easy scores, they may be there or thereabouts come the last sort of 10 minutes, and that's where you want to be. If a game's there 10 minutes to go, people like Patrick McBride, um, our experienced players up in there, bringing people like Nal Burns in off the bench to say Pat Shivers has won enough with Cargan and done really well in Ulster games as well. He's a big, big unit of a lot. Maybe a handful, maybe in around about the full forward in there, um, which I don't think Darren would be used to. You know, playing against it. I know but last year I was watching Kilku. Any high ball was getting in top of Magal. You know, he looked a wee bit suspect under it. So I think Andre may look to play Pat Shivers and also Rui McCann up in there and play high, long ball in the, to start with. And if they can nip a goal or two, which Big McCann can, he's well known for nipping a goal or two, they may or thereabouts. But with Down, they're a wounded animal. They were expected to, to come away from Crow Park with not only promotion, but also winning the league last time. And you, you don't go stroking an, an angry cat, you know. Um, and that's what Antrim will be fearful of come Saturday night. And they potentially could, the way Down play football, they're running style in their own back garden. If it's not, it'll not be a three or four point game. It'll either be a one point game or a 15 point game. You know, that's just the the, the way it um it'll fall over. You don't go stroking an angry cat. Where where did you hear that one from? <laughs> Is that not a popular saying? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> never heard of it never heard of it but I will be using it from the here on in uh, Mr McMullen down or Antrim this weekend no doubt you'll be getting to it yeah I'm going to go to that one and uh, I was at the game in Corrigan this year and like Mick Byrne uh, an excellent goalkeeper I'd have to add he's, he equalised at 8 points all in the early in the second half but down pulled away and the scoreline definitely didn't reflect their control Um the one thing that Andy McEntee will certainly have watched will be how John McGovern got caught in the mismatch for that goal, Wesley's first goal. And, and you, you well know, Joe, from playing in there, you, a diagonal ball in, it's just ask him to be punched home. I don't know where that echo is coming from. But, um, Val, Val, we love your voice that much that it's, just, it's coming through in all masses. <laughs> I don't know what the story is. But, um, yeah, yeah. So Dowd are going to have to close that off. They're going to have to, like, Ryan McAvoy needed to be in there. And if McCann's going to be in there, um, you can imagine that, you can imagine, especially Kieran Mina, because he, he's, he's superb at organising things under in there, you can imagine their training drills have got Pat Havern and Murdoch in sort of trying to be that man, trying to tailor, you know, scenarios where they can not concede. Because if, if, uh, if they keep a clean sheet, I couldn't see them, I couldn't see Antrim, you know, if Downkeep clean sheet, I couldn't see Antrim one in it. But they they have just been absolutely crucified with injuries and a lot of turnover of players. But as you said there, Kev, if they can get those two amigos up front together to get something out of them, Paddy McBride, I think he scored something like 13 points in the last four games, coming into a bit of form. Um, Dermot McLeese missed six games of last year's competition. He's come back and he missed that down game that they actually lost at the very end last year. Yeah. Like down in Park Esler, like um, I, 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 anybody I spoke to in Antrim can't they just can't work out how they lost it. So they're bound to have some sort of solace there. That and as you say, if you're in the same division, then you'd like to think that the game will be competitive and like. Like look at Monaghan and Cavan, two different divisions, and and look look how how different the, the second half was yesterday in terms of Cavan really going at it. So, um, it's very hard to make a case for down not being favourites, um, but I, I travel on Saturday hoping that it's going to be a good game, and I think all we I think all anybody ever asks from a game in the championship, especially in neutral, is a couple of goals in it that's going to be tight near the end, and that's what I'm hoping for. But I still think down wins it. And as you say, the wind, the wind and animal. You, you know, they've, they, they're, if they're not bitter, bitter, bitterly disappointed, well, they should be, but they will be. So they're bound to have a bounce back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's another, uh, that's another thing to look forward to this weekend. And I suppose we'll crack on to the other action in the Leinster Senior Football Championship quarter final on Saturday. You have Leash against Offaly in Leash Higher Moor Park at seven pm. On Saturday and then on Sunday in the Leicester Senior Football Championship quarterfinals, you have Dublin against Mead in Crow Park at half four. And of course, again, we live on RTE. So there's no better man to ask than Joe Sheridan for this particular game. Joe, you played many of these games down through the years. I suppose obviously the rivalry probably has gone out the window to a degree with obviously Dublin's dominance. But I suppose, can we see any chance for Mead this weekend or is it just going to be Dublin, Dublin, Dublin? Oh, look. As, as a mead man, you'd always like to think that you'd be able to put up a good performance and, and try and sort of put a respectful scoreline up and it, it's just going to be tough. You know, Dublin are really playing extremely good football. The, the pace, the power they're playing with at the minute. Um, you know, we had a couple of changes in the team started last the league, so I'm not sure if we know the best team or we have everyone available. I haven't heard any stories or any inside information about sort of injuries and stuff like that. So it's, um, I don't think the team that started on Sunday will start this Sunday. I think maybe Colin had one eye on looking towards the Dublin game and, and possibly sort of maybe resting a certain certain players to, to maybe give the lads as much chance as possible. So look, Dublin, are, look, we know where they're at. Um, we're under no, under, under no illusions that we're, we're going to go out and win this game. Do I think we can compete? Yes, I do. Do I think the lads think we can win the game? Absolutely. Um, but there's a reality of how good Dublin are at the minute. You know, you've got three teams so far ahead of everyone else at the minute. And if um, if we can hold them off and sort of be there thereabouts at halftime and, and sort of 
be able to hold them out and not concede too many goals. The problem is if Dublin gets a goal earlier on in the game, it could be three, four, five goals, you know, and they don't, as 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 a lot of people have said, like if you ask any of the Dubs, they don't fear playing me anymore. It used to be, okay, yeah, right, this could go anyway. It could be a point or two in it either way, but it just, I, I don't see Dubs even worrying about this game and, but it's not crazy, Joe. Like, but it's it is crazy. I know, obviously, this the debate we're kind of having a couple of minutes ago. But like, even you can, I can always remember like two thousand five yourself, Graham Garrity, and oh, the big, the big guns going up against Dublin and Gobby with them days. Well, you look at twenty eleven. It was the last time we sort of competed properly. Like we, we were beaten by two points. Dublin went on to win the All Ireland. You know, the next year we got beaten by seven. Then it was twelve. Then it was twenty two. You know. It sort of has been a dramatic downfall from us since that. Um, and a couple of years ago, it was close to halftime. Then Dublin kicked on, and it's it's just it's just where we're at at the minute, and how far Dublin have gone ahead of us. To be honest, it's 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 not it's not nice to see because the competition has gone out of lens. The football, um, you know, there's no one. I don't think if you put me, Claire, and I don't know West me together, would we beat them? That's the that's the scary thing about it, you know, and and. That's very hard to say from a feed man, to be honest, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's it's something we, 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 we obviously have a lot of want to be able to be get back to be back to successful and having a, a competition that sort of rivals the Ulsters and, you know, even Connick to a point um, where it's, it's literally a, it's a walk in the park for Dublin every year and for the last 15 years, pretty much. And it's it's. It's it's demoralising for me as a, as a team and obviously for, for all the other teams in Leinster. And it's we wonder why people aren't going to watch the games because people are expecting Dublin to beat me by 20 points at the weekend. And that's that's not a flippant comment. That's what people, even me, people are saying. I'm chatting to them since since the last couple of weeks when, when we knew what was happening. And um, that's that's the expectation, you know. So why would people just go up to Dublin apart from have a few points and have a bit of crack on, on, on mm-hmm. a Sunday? That's that, that's really, that's the reality of it. You know, there will be people going, like I, you'd be going up with sort of a... a sort of an inside maybe confidence maybe okay maybe we could maybe we can because there are certain players that on the day could compete and give Dublin a, a right handful you know it was good to see Jody Morris back um, it was, James yeah. Conlon has been in and out over the last sort of couple of years he, he, had a, he had a good performance against Longford but you know Longford are miles off Dublin so um, but look if we could get some sort of sh- the, 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 the right team out with the structure and, and the shape that we can sort of just frustrate them for 35 40 minutes you know it's end could happen but i just i just can't see it unfortunately mm. it's maybe, point, Joe. yeah maybe next year and it's not on just the, the meat and double star one of the recommendations of trials they may be able to do next year you know by the bookies do uh, a handicap system a minus five a minus four maybe that would bring a bit more excitement to some games <laughs> 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 yeah, long for and then it obviously long for putting that score up against me as well. So I think that's definitely worth thinking. I suppose one last point, Joe. Obviously, you were kind of touching on Dean Rock's comments last week about you know not, him basically not knowing how many Lancer championships he has won. I suppose what I, I know it's probably a bit of an obvious question, but what did piss you off about that? I suppose obviously me going for Lancer for the last number of years, but what really I suppose annoyed you about that? Uh, it, it, it was. Like he knows how many he's won, but to say it like you know it it it, it sort of disrespects the lens of championships that he has won, you know. And there's a lot of teams out there fighting every year to win championships. And yes, Kerry have won their monsters, and you know, but for that one team, you know, you, you look back when Tip won that monster, that is the greatest thing that a lot of them players will ever win, you know. So so this to disrespect the provincial medal. Yes, you you don't have to say we celebrate it. Yeah, that, that's we understand that because of the importance they put on it and and. For that, for the Dublin lads, obviously winning an All Ireland is the main thing, you know. So it's, it was just that it, it was a wee bit disrespectful to so the length the championship and the length the medal that, that they have won because they've you know they've earned it, they've, they've put the work in to get there. So it was just it was maybe a flippant com- comment, but it was just sort of way it came across. To be honest, that was all. Joe Sheridan v Dean Rock in the charity box match. Who who wins? Who wins, Mister Kennedy? <laughs> Dean, Dean who? I, Dean Rock. <laughs> Dean doesn't know our joke. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give out when we come out to that is down to chat to the boys. He's, he's, he's a good lad, you know. It was just a comment, maybe that was all. It wasn't end to do with yeah. him. 
<laughs> brilliant stuff, lads. Brilliant stuff. Well, uh, uh, I, 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 yes. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Go on ahead. What's there, Joe? Don't I'll fight him, though, does it? <laughs> yeah. Joe will fight any man that goes against them. And we'll be other action, lads. Uh, Loud against Wexford in Leash Higher Moor Park at 4 p.m. on Sunday. And then Kildare against Wicklow in Leash Higher Moor Park at quarter to two on Sunday. Of course, game will be live in GA Go. Can Ocean McConville get another big win? We'll wait and see. It's a wounded animal, that Kildare team. And then the Ulster Senior Football Championship quarter final on Sunday. It's for Mana against Armagh in Bruce Park at 2 p.m. Of course, game be live on BBC Sport and I, Mr. McMullen. It's a very, very difficult place to go to, but we all do expect Armagh to get the victory. I think they have to get a victory. I can imagine it was such a disappointing camp coming home from Crook Park. Uh, obviously, with the amount of players that Donegal were missing, you were expecting Armagh to win, and I felt they needed to win it. Silverware, they just needed of, of, of some in some shape or form. But I think the most disappointing thing, you know, I saw as a neutral was just how much Donegal dominated the game from early on. And you can nearly see their chest pump, you know, their shoulders straightening out and they're really, really the chest were out and they're really dominating it. And it wasn't really until uh I know Armag got five points in a row, but it wasn't until Supi Campbell really started to run directly at them where there was like a spark in Crow Park. Oshin O'Neill kicked the ball from in front of the Cusick stand, flags from up everywhere and you got the feeling, right, they've turned this, but they weren't able to grind it out. I think from from their point of view, there has to be a concern that not closing out tight games. And all it will take is for them to do it once and that'll maybe be the monkey off the back. But the next time they're going to close out a, 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 a big game, it will be an Ulster final if they get there. You know, that's where they're at now. They have to win silver. So, um, maybe the defeat helps them focus a wee bit more going into it, but there's just that, there's just that nagging thing that they're not, that they're not delivering. Like, they should have beat us in last year's Ulster final. And didn't, and that'll disappoint them. You know, so I'm not saying it's a, I'm not saying it's a do your day game because obviously the All Ireland series is is there, but they're going to have to try and challenge for silverware, and you know they're they're and potentially the easier side of the Ulster Championship draw. Mm-hmm. So it is it is a must win game, mm-hmm. and for Mana, um, for Mana played some performance of football against Cavan that day. Oh, they did. They were they were brilliant. They were brilliant. They were, yeah, they were they were, yeah. they were brilliant. And um, funny, Raymond did say that yesterday that once they realised they weren't promoted, that the Fermanagh game was a nothing game. He wasn't belittling the game. He was just saying that they didn't. The result was irrelevant. I think in the context of his comments, John was the fact that were you disappointed going into the championship having lost your last two league games? I don't think he, he was. Just, no, it, it, that that's the context he was placing it in. Yeah. You know, he, he wasn't belittling Fermanagh's performance. No, Fermanagh's performance that day was very good. Like even Garvin you know, Jones, Garvin Jones, yeah, top class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. G- Garvin Jones, Casty, and and Alton Kelm were all involved in that wonderful goal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the big direct ball. So our um, defending, our defending. Oh God! But anyway, <laughs> and, yeah. and 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 the thing about it is like. Armagh has, you know, bar the two goals that conceded in Cork, which I don't know anything about because I didn't see the game and it was a dead rubber. But their defence has been very, very solid. They've marked inside, you know, they've, they've kept all the forwards out side lane side, they've marked goal side all the time, they've forced people into pot shots and and, and it has worked. Um, but I would just love, uh, a broken record, I've said it on here so many times, you just love them to have the the Merlin and Rain O'Neill up front together and try and try and try and do what Westmeath did to down, do you know, and, and, and go at it. But mm. um Fermana relegated will be so disappointed. It was probably the Cork game that did the damage, you know, from yeah. chat even a couple of Fermana lads that I would know they would say that that once that game was gone it was psychologically oh, a big big blue. Kieran did. Kieran Donnelly said that straight after the Cavan game. Yeah. yeah, that's that was the game. Yeah, you know, so um, like the relegated, they'll just see this. They're at home. 
and they'll obviously want to. It's it's an obvious thing to say, but they'll obviously want to put in a big big performance at home. They're bound to take some sort of solace from the way they played against Cavan. The result, Definitely. obviously, but the way yeah. they played, and you know, you'd like to think if they brought that same sort of attacking flair, attack attacking purpose. That they could ask Armagh questions, and that's the thing about it. Armagh, as I said earlier, Armagh have been very difficult to break down. Um, Decky McCluskey actually playing very well for Fermanagh as well. So it's 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 the likes of him trying to go at them. I think the biggest problem they had was in the Cavan game. I wasn't no, what was it? Sorry, the Louth game. Apologies, the Louth game. They played with a sweeper and just got opened up by Sam Malloy and company. So. I think that was, and then with the time we went to Breffley, it was a sort of a combination of, yeah. I think Largo Ellis played it, and it was Kane McManus before that, played sweeper and sort of closed out, Kevin. You were at the game, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what they're probably going to have to try and do, if, if Armagh do some some sort of threat where they're playing it a little longer, but I just, I just can't see Armagh not winning it. I think their need is a lot greater, but the, the, the caveat that is, if, yeah, this Armagh team has promised so much and just haven't haven't managed the big games. So there's always that doubt. But one, you know, they just need one final victory. That league final could have been the one. And now the debate is we're going to have to get back to Clonus and try and win the Ulster title to bury that hatchet. Yeah, because I, I did say in last week's podcast that that league final was a serious opportunity for Armagh to get silverware. And mm-hmm. obviously Johnny Murta was a very frustrated man even Crow Park there last weekend. And rightly so, because it's Armagh, like... Oh, like if, if you're an Armagh supporter, you would have to be very frustrated. I suppose for man and things, this was last point on uh, Mr. Kennedy. It's kind of life after Sean Quigley. And obviously we've seen Sean Quigley maybe getting a bit frustrated with lack of game time and bits and bobs last year. So it's good to see for maybe Fermanagh kind of pushing on without Mr. Quigley. It is, but I, don't, I generally don't think Fermanagh fans are expecting a win on Sunday. You know, they'll go with all the hope in the world, but they're aware of where they are. They're aware of the... The sort of depth they have within the panel, you know, Newton Callum is a, an absolutely fantastic baller, you know, a great footballer to watch. Um, but they don't have the depth that Armagh have, and it's as simple as that. You know, Armagh, as Miles touched on there, the Donegal game, you you could have told your five year old child at, at the story the night before you talked to him exactly what was going to happen. You know, Donegal would have come out all guns blazing. It would have been a case of Armagh staying with them and then kicking on the sort of last ten minutes. But again. Bit like last year in the Ulster final, you they almost they don't see where the dangers are coming from. Armagh are a different team whenever they press high. Whenever they pressed high, Donegal were in trouble in Crook Park. Mm-hmm. Whenever last year in the Ulster final, uh, Derry scored one five just from short kickouts. You know they dropped off a lot and to get it. And you know, Armagh wouldn't have the most disciplined defence. You know they can give away easy frees and stuff in there. I don't think even if Armagh win on s- Sunday that they'll learn anything for it. I think that if if, if, it, if things go as I intend them to, where Armagh goes through and down goes through, I expect Armagh to be it down again. Mm-hmm. And whoever Armagh meet in the Ulster final, it'll really come down to that sort of what are they doing? What is their last five or ten minutes that's going on to, to yeah. get them over the line? Because they have more than enough potential. They have all the talent that I, I think personally that their depth is the greatest in Ulster. Even their physical size and presence, they're mm-hmm. on a different level as well. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like yeah, we're, we instead of like what Joe was mentioned about Cavan, where the, the goal, uh, Paddy, Paddy Dench's goal, they could have held onto that ball and seen that game out, but they didn't. They went for it. Arma almost dropped back and protected leave. Instead of just keep on putting nails into the coffin, they said, well, we're halfway there. We'll just sit back now and, and, and bait that team onto you. Mm. And it's just madness. I don't think they'll learn anything until they're in that situation again. Yeah. I think they're, they're, they're just crying out to one. They're, they're crying out to what? To win one big game, like a, you know, against substantial opposition, I think that's what they're crying out for. And you know, and and, and to be honest, I think the game needs them to do that. They need an our big yeah. hitter, and you know, the game needs that. You know, mm. they need to be like imagine Armagh went to an All Ireland quarter final and beat Mayo, for example. Like that, yeah. they would have they would have sort of arrived by that stage. That would be a massive achievement for them, or to go to an Ulster final and won it. Yeah. It's just that one day. It's just that one day they need to maybe to maybe change that whole mentality. I don't know. Only the only the lads inside the camp on the we're only speculating, but I feel that they just need one big performance. And you know, you know, look even out to Cam Magan, you know, and, and half back there, you've even the the they potentially 
you know, out of the five top keepers in Ireland, they've two of them in Blaine and Rafferty. You know, they, mm-hmm. they have an abundance of talent in there before you even start mentioning about the O'Neill brothers, McGrugan, you know, Mernon, stuff like that, Subi Campbell. You know, boys are here absolutely, I mean, you pay in to watch them yourself. If they can just get that one win, as Mal says, God knows where they would end up because they're, they're calm. Go through the roof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is a long time coming, though, lads. It is a long time coming, and I think to Johnny Murta, you know, if they don't get an Ulster championship this year, it'll be interesting to see what the outcome at all is because there's some top class coaches. You've Gilligan, you've Kieran McKeever, you've Kieran Donny up there. So, high time, I suppose, gents. I suppose, lads, to wrap up uh, for this weekend and this week. Um, Malik Bullen, your player to watch this weekend and bet off the weekend. Um, player to watch this weekend. Oh, we sort of caught me and forgot about all this. Um, <laughs> player to watch this weekend. I'm gonna go for uh, you caught me cold here. I'm just thinking here. A nation holds its breath. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a packy bounder, yeah. packy bounder back in '98, was it '98? Uh, uh, I'm going for since I'm going to the game uh, itself, I'm going to go with. The nation is holding his breath. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking, yeah. you're, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking, Mr. Kennedy, of the patience of saints. Go, 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 go use first and then turn this light on here and see if it <laughs> Yeah, it looks like we're, it, lo- it looks like we're about to tell ghost stories there with the, with the, with the dark. It looks good. It kind of, it kind of, it creates a bit of a cinematic effect. I should have, uh, that, I should have that light on five months ago. <laughs> yeah. Where are we with that, Mr. Kennedy? Um, I, I think Liam Kerr. Could have a great game on Saturday against Antrim. Um, I'm going to go with Kiel Mooney though. I think Kiel Mooney, you know, he's, if he, carried, he had a good league final as well. Um, that he might end up being one of the top scorers on the pitch. Uh, apart from maybe Big Pat on Saturday down in Newry. So I think that's probably not the, the game to watch it. I think for Mane and Armagh, it's really interesting to see how Armagh go. And Oshin O'Neill plays for Armagh. I think he deserves maybe to get a bit more game time this time. I'd like to see him playing get a bit more game time as well on Sunday. Um, my player, the person I'm going to look out for is uh, is Garvin Jones to see can he do back to back performances against uh, an Armagh defence who, as I say, have been quite difficult to break down. So that's who I'm going for. Bad after the weekend, or did you say that already? No, I haven't, haven't said that already. Um, more pressure, <laughs> more, 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 more pressure. I just haven't been, haven't been at the latter end of this podcast away to forgot about all that dark. So, um <laughs> Better of the weekend. Um, I'm going to go for. Uh, I'm going to go for down for Mana, Dublin, treble, just something easy. <laughs> you would have got, you would have got some odds, and was it Waterford? Who won at the weekend? Waterford, Wicklow, or a Cavan triple? Oh my God, if anyone did that, you would be going off to. Say, I don't know where you'd be going. Where would you go, Mister Kennedy, if you won all that money? Uh, probably up the car and lock for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with four. I'm gonna add on the fourth team. I'm gonna obviously down your favourites. Dublin. And, uh, Armagh favourites. So down Arm down Armagh, and I'm going for Dublin, and I'm gonna go for Leash because they're the team that always let me down, and surely that'll bump up the accumulator. I, I'm obviously not a betting man. I don't really understand odds. So gamble responsibly. Gamble responsibly. I'm gonna. Responsibly. I'm, 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 gonna th- I'm gonna throw in leash because they're most unpredictable. Surely they'll. Surely they, they, they'll maybe come through for me this time. You'll be yeah. getting a letter from the uh, MLA to say why you put us in there. <laughs> uh, the amount of times I've predicted leash for we, you know, like prediction things you're doing, and you think you look back and you go, "Oh my God, they're beat." Yeah. Yeah. Justin, we'll let them off the leash this weekend. Lads, thanks so many for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is brought to you by yourgoretch.com. Use Rural Jamek podcast to get 15% off on the website. We're in the championship. Get yourself organized. Uh, we have Joe Sheridan. Thank you very much. I think we just lost Joe near the end there. Gated Life journalist Michael McMullen and GA Sports Tracker app owner Kevin Kennedy. Thanks so many, lads. Have a great week. Thanks. thanks.